Paul said to Timothy, and it's recorded in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, all Bible scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and, and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and it teaches us to do what is right. In 1978, was a landmark year for Scrabble players. The National Scrabble Association, NSA, which shouldn't be mistaken for the NFA or National Firearms Association, published its first ever official Scrabble players dictionary. Now my wife has a copy of this book and she uses it quite effectively when she plays against me in Scrabble. It seems that, she suggests at least, I make up a lot of words. Now, I do use words from different languages. And it was for this very reason that the NSA published its official dictionary to determine what foreign words were acceptable and what words were not acceptable. And it has become the final and authoritative word on Scrabble words. Now Paul told Timothy in the reading I just shared about the importance of the Bible for our lives. All Bible, he said, is inspired and given to us by God to instruct and empower and to guide. It is the final and authoritative word on God from God. Not only is the Bible filled with instructions and laws, it reveals God's working with people and it provides common sense teaching and instruction. Yet it seems so difficult for us to follow these basic common sense directions. Things tend to go much more smoothly when people are willing to follow basic instructions and guidelines. However, many people feel that these instructions are unfair impositions on them and on their freedoms. These instructions therefore don't apply to me. I'm different. I'm liberated. I'm enlightened. For years, to reduce accidents, the local mill where we lived would put up signs such as, do not put hands in moving equipment. They made sense. However, they found these instructions didn't work. People had that same mindset. They don't apply to me. I'm different. And so to keep people safe, they set up large barriers and they put automatic shutoff systems on the machines. A new worker is frustrated with a board being stuck on a conveyor belt. Without properly shutting down the equipment, without requesting for assistance from other people, he bypasses the automatic shutoffs and he climbs over the multiple barriers to dislodge the stuck board. His efforts worked, however, the machine starts to operate while he's on the conveyor belt. Simple biblical instructions. All too simple for some, it seems. Others feel they're too restrictive, but they're simple yet always valid, always beneficial, always true always necessary. These are the principles that Jesus lived by. These are the principles that he modeled for us to follow. Harrington Emerson, I'd like to quote this uh, statement by his once again. As to methods, there may be a million and then some, but principles are few. The person who grasps principles can successfully select their methods. The person who tries methods ignoring principles is sure to have 
trouble. We'll look again at the principles that we find, the principles for life that we find from the Bible. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, instruct us through your word of the Bible and through your Holy Spirit. Enlighten us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to look today at some principles for handling stress. Leonardo da Vinci stated, Every now and then, go away and have a little relaxation. For when you come back to your work, your judgment will be far more clear. Benjamin Franklin stated this, the person who can take rest is greater than the person who can take cities. Again, we're talking about the principles of handling stress that the Bible teaches us, that Jesus instructs us. There are so many negatives that impact our ability to rest and sleep. Stress, of course, is a major problem. We all have lots of stress, especially these days it seems. Medical ailments, medications, pain, discomfort, even age. Externals such as what we eat or how much we eat and drink. I for one cannot sleep after I've had a big meal unless of course I've eaten turkey and then I have no problem sleeping. Rest is essential for a healthy, productive life. However, so many, when they're asked if they take an intentionally set aside time to rest, they'll tell you they're far, far too busy. There's too many demands, too many things to get done, too many responsibilities, too many bills, too much that is urgent and important and needs our constant attention. And yet, and yet, God tells us to rest. Our Creator is wiser than us. He is greater than us. He cares for us. And as children need guidance from parents, we need guidance from God. Isaiah stated this in Isaiah 48 and verse 17. I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you who directs you in the way you should go. And the psalmist stated this. David said in Psalm 23 in the first and the uh, verses 2 and 3. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. Two important words there to consider. He makes me lie down. He leads me. But I think I need to fix this, to organize that, to see people. I have work to do. And these things are pressing upon me, and therefore I cannot, and I do not have time to relax. You know, there's an old saying, we should come apart before we fall apart. There are two ways that a shepherd can make sheep lie down in green pastures. The first one is not pleasant, but sometimes it is necessary. For example, a shepherd notices that one of the flock is very ill, but it's also restless, and so it can't get the sheep to relax long enough for it to administer the necessary medication. So what does the shepherd do? The shepherd then takes the sheep and lifts it off its feet and lies it down on its rump is not dignified, but it works. The sheep stops struggling. Sometimes, to get us to stop, God allows things to come into our lives that bring us to a grinding halt. It's not dignified, but it works. When our bodies are deprived of rest, of sleep, we're unable to heal, they're unable to heal, to rebuild, to recharge. Athletes know the importance of rest and of sleep when it comes to physical training. You see, rest 
enables the muscles to repair and it will assist with preventing injury and help with muscle growth. Now the other way that God makes us rest is much more delightful. And he does this through his faithful and loving and caring interactions with us. The idea is to find, the idea is to relax, to, to find peace with our problem-filled, hurried and harried lives, our preoccupation with perplexing problems, it makes it very difficult to do something as simple as relaxing. Now for sheep, in order for them to relax, there must be certain conditions met. For example, no sense of tension, no fear, no minor or major problems, no sense of hunger or need. And we are not so different. And only the shepherd can help sheep to relax. And only our shepherd can help his sheep to relax. So let's look at that. Jesus, our shepherd, helps us with our fears so that we can relax. Sheep are very nervous animals. And why wouldn't they be? They're pretty much defenseless. Sheep are so nervous that a stray rabbit crossing their path can cause a stampede. Here's a story about a dog the size of a chihuahua caused over 200 sheep to run off in terror. You see, if they sense even the slightest danger, they stand alert, ready to run for their lives. One shepherd had experienced the deadly effects of fear on the sheep. In one night alone, nine sheep died of fright because they could smell the cougar. Night after night, his sheep would remain alert and stressed, never resting, never relaxing. After a time, he realized that nothing worked better to calm his flock than him being there with them. No shepherd in the field, no rest for the sheep. Only the presence of the shepherd, their protector, filled them with a sense of reassurance. And so, night after night, he and his dog would stay out in the field, under the stars, watching over the flock. We live in very uncertain times, in a very uncertain world. And our lives can be filled with hazards and pitfalls. Not one of us can tell what a new day will bring. The unknown, the unexpected. Many are not able to cope with this cruel and harsh set of circumstances which may come our way. But in the center of all of this is the reality that our Good Shepherd is with us. And that makes all the difference. Psalm 46 and the first three verses state, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. And again I repeat, therefore we will not fear, for he is an ever-present help in our times of trouble. Then Paul stated to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. There is nothing like the sense of knowing that our shepherd is nearby at all times. He is watching over us night and day, making sure of our safety, always with us, and with him watching over us, there is hope. With him by our side, fears subside. I can rest and refresh in peace. Then our shepherd brings rest even in the midst of conflict. Sheep experience tension from rivalry and from competition from within the flock. 
You see, we live in a win-lose society. There are winners and there are losers. The other day, the Winnipeg Jets won their series in hockey. That's great. However, the Edmonton Oilers lost their series. Winners and losers. And nobody wants to be a loser. In the flock, they call it the budding order. One sheep, one ewe will dominate all the others. But when the shepherd comes along, all these petty rivalries are forgotten. They forget their struggles and they relax. They are content with their shepherd. Jesus said, and it's recorded in John chapter 10 and verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You see, fear brings discontent. Fear brings dissatisfaction. And that's what causes conflict a lot of times. But when we see and embrace the presence of Jesus, there is contentment. Selfishness and position lose their importance. As Christians, we can relax, content to walk quietly in close companionship with Him. Then also, He brings rest from major and minor problems and irritants. Caribou in the far north can lose up to half a pint of blood a day just from mosquitoes. In northern Ontario, we were, I've driven through northern Ontario an awful lot, and you pay attention to the signs of moose crossing and of deer crossing. For you see, especially during the summer months, the moose and the deer are driven to the roads to get away from the mosquitoes. And this is both stressful for animals and drivers. Sheep cannot relax when they're being bugged. They stand alert, they stomp their feet, they shake their legs, even running into dense bush to get away from the bugs. But a good shepherd will apply various insect repellents to keep the bugs off them. This is demanding work, it's expensive, it's time consuming, it's smelling, but it's absolutely necessary. One of the main functions of the Holy Spirit that Jesus has given us is to bring healing and comfort to us from the problems that we deal with on a daily basis, from the irritants that we experience constantly. He brings serenity. He brings strength. He brings a calmness in the face of the most exasperating and perplexing of problems. The Holy Spirit applies a healing, soothing oil or ointment. And because of his ministry, I am able to rest and relax in his presence. Again, John records these words from Jesus in chapter 14, verse 26 and 27. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Then also, Jesus' presence with us, Jesus' power within us, brings rest from the fear of unmet needs. Paul stated to the Philippians in chapter 4, verse 19, and my God will supply your every need according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. When David watched over his father's sheep, it was just outside of Bethlehem. It was a dry, brown, sunburnt environment a near desert in place. In order for the sheep to be well fed in this type of a climate, the shepherd, like David, had to work very hard. He must clear the land of rocks. He must tear up the bushes. He must plow carefully and deeply, and seeding and planting the special grains needed, and then irrigating the soil. It's a lot of work, but it pays off. 
The sheep, as a result of that, are well fed. And they lie down, and they relax, and they chew their cud. But when sheep are not properly fed, they're always on their feet, searching for food. They do not do well, and they cannot relax. Jesus, our shepherd, is working hard to clear our hearts and our lives of the rocks of disbelief, to tear up the roots of bitterness, to move into our lives and to sow the seeds of His Word, of His Spirit in our lives, which bring contentment, peace, and rest, even in challenging times. The psalmist stated in 146 and verse 7, He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. Jesus and his presence with us gives us hope and assurance. He helps us with the problems of everyday life, even the most exasperating ones. He feeds us through his word. He enables us to find the strength to relax and he renews our strength. We're no good to ourselves, to each other, to God. We cannot relax. Jesus will give us the strength, the ability to relax. He makes me lie down in green pastures. According to Isaiah, God teaches us what is best. And therefore, we should listen. We should pay attention and we should follow his instructions. And his instructions, he makes us lie down. Allow him to minister to us in all of the ways that he does so that he can bring us into that sense of peace and contentment where we can relax and we can rest. And allow him to renew our strength. God is ready. God is capable of making us rest as we trust in Him. Trust in Him today. Let me share these words again from John chapter 14 and verse 26 and 27. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your words to us. Your words of instruction that remind us of the value and the importance for each one of us to allow you to make us lie down, to lead us beside calm water. Lord, open our minds and our hearts so that we can allow your ministry to take place in our lives. That your Holy Spirit will come along and minister to us and bring us peace so that we can rest and we can be renewed. Bless us, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name.